Hello, dear ones, and welcome to Subtle Medicine Radio, brought to you by InnerSpark. This is the resource for all things holistic healing, natural living, conscious relating, epic life changing, and spirituality, all steeped in earth-based wisdom. I'm your host, Devin, and I'm joined today, as always, by my co-host and podcast producer, Mike. That's me. On today's show, episode 20, we're discussing the energetics of fall. We'll explore the wheel of the year, the sacred invitations of this time, and how to shift our lifestyle habits to ensure optimal wellness, not just in this season, but beyond. So let's dive in. Sounds good. Are you ready? Yep. All right. So let's start by talking about the concept of the wheel of the year, because for many of us, sadly, it's it's foreign and we don't know what it is. <laughs> So each of the seasons represent a part of the wheel of the year. And then each of the main four seasons has a little mini sub-season as well. For example, we have autumn and we have Samhain or Halloween before going into Yule or the winter solstice and then into Imbolc, currently known as Groundhog Day, before the spring equinox. Then it is Beltane before the summer solstice, and then Lamas or Lunasad before the autumnal equinox once more. We're currently in the Samhain season in autumn, which began at Halloween and lasts six weeks before the winter solstice, which marks the return of the light once more. And I know you're probably like, the return of the light, but it's winter, it's dark as hell, that's the dark time. Well, no. So the dark half of the year begins at summer solstice and goes through winter solstice. The light half of the year is from winter solstice to summer solstice. And so it is always darkest before the dawn, and that's where we are right now, just in this really dark, dark, tender time in this last bit of autumn leading into the rebirth of the light, so this Samhain season. Each season and sub-season have their own unique flavor, energies, offerings, and invitations for us. We, all people, but especially in women's bodies as women, are miniature Earths. So just as she, Mama Earth, has her own rhythms and cycles and seasons, we do too. You know, I love that so much. I was raised in a very religiously oppressive kind of way, and there was absolutely no recognition of seasonal magic at all. And It's kind of like The Wizard of Oz, where everything starts off all black and white, and you have your seasons, and they are known by what, like, vacations you take. (laughs) You know, there's no seasonal magic. It's like you have spring break, summer vacation, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, and those are, like, your four holidays. And when you step past that kind of, like, Puritan restriction that anything that really feels into the seasons and the moons is taboo and step into this very aligned and in touch way of being then it's like being in oz where everything is alive and in colors and waves that you've never allowed yourself to see before so having that kind of expansion has very much changed the way i feel and perceive uh the passage of time yeah that's beautiful and i really like that analogy with the wizard of oz that's perfect it's great imagery So yes, when we come into right relationship with these rhythms and surrender to their poles and currents, our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual being naturally thrive. And everything does get way more colorful. We are more radiant, more resilient, more clear, and more purposeful. It's truly a life-changing experience to reconnect to our natural way of being. We're not meant to be the same all year. I'm going to repeat that again. We are not meant to be the same all year. Our diets, our habits, our exercise routines, our workflow, what we're putting our attention into, all of these are supposed to change and flow. The dis-ease comes when we resist the flow and resist the change and then fight like hell to just keep things the same all year long. It's, it's an impossible attempt and it just kind of breeds misery. <laughs> So coming into a state of surrender and reverence and awe bring that joy and ease and clarity. And for many of us, it feels scary as hell to release this illusion of control and like white knuckle grip we have on life. And the thing is, we're never in control of shit. So why try so hard? And the other truer truth, because I'm just full of truth right now, all right? We're always held and supported and guided. We just put blinders on and miss the cues and think that in our smallness, 
we know best, right? And that's just not always the case. So earth wisdom, our wisdom, our nature is what is crucially missing in today's culture. Absolutely. When we can shift just one little thing in response to what's happening on our planet and our environment, the results are huge. And this little thing could be adding a breathing exercise for grounding during the autumn season, because autumn is rather airy and dry and scattered. So to support ourselves, that one little change could be adding a grounding breathing exercise. Another example could be to really mind what you're eating during the peak heat of summer so as to not burden your already overtaxed digestive system. Because as we discussed in the summer episode, the digestive system is weaker in summer because of the ever-present heat as the body is working to remove heat from itself, the digestive system will suffer because that's a heating process. So just these little shifts. It's not hard, and it is the way for us while in these human vessels on this planet. It's, it's that simple. You mentioned that one little shift can bring about huge results. So I was wondering, what is an example of a seemingly small shift that you have made, and what did that bring about for you? Great question. <clears throat> you know, there really have been so many over the years, and it's hard to remember what some of those earliest ones were. So what are examples of small shifts that I've made? I think that as it relates to just daily living, because even the day itself, just a single day, has the energies of each of the four seasons and can be divided as such, because everything's always in a flowing state. So just as it relates to daily living, a simple change that I made years ago that has really just snowballed into other really beautiful changes, I would say sinking with the sun. So waking before the sun rises and then settling way down as the sun is setting. This also flows seasonally as well because the length of daylight fluctuates. And in the summertime, there's more life force energy. We don't require as much rest and sleep. In the wintertime, that is the time for rest and sleep and rejuvenation. So it works out perfectly that the sun sets accordingly, right? And then another change I've made personally from a seasonal standpoint is eating as seasonally as possible. Things are in season when they're in season for a reason, people. There are specific nutrients and energetic properties of the available foods that serve our vessels in response to whatever we'll face seasonally. And I'll get into more of what that looks like for fall here in a second. Autumn, a little bit more about autumn, and then I'll get into how it shows up in the various levels of our being. Autumn is this beautiful time of exhaling. It's a time of simultaneous harvest and celebration, and also of death and waning life force. It is slow, it is winding down, it's downshifting, and it can feel a bit scattered, airy, and ungrounded. Autumn brings drier, windier air, and it's typically much cooler. There's also this, this energetic sense of release and relief. And as it relates to autumn in the physical body, it's a good time to check in and do some very gentle and rejuvenative cleansing. Spring is the time for a cleanse aimed at shedding and removal. And now we want to check in with ourselves and any habits we've developed over the summer and ask our bodies what they need as they begin the process of coming to stillness during the winter months ahead. Think of this time as a passive and natural re release and cleanse versus an active, more purging style like in spring. Additionally, with lower life force energy and a body recovering from summer's heat accumulation, it's a time for gentler, more restorative exercise, such as walking, hiking, restorative, and yin yoga. Yeah, those are my favorites. So as an aside to the listener, Devin uh, recently introduced me to yin yoga, and I've been enjoying that very much. Um, and I really love all things fall and autumn. And I was wondering, is that like some kind of uh, something unbalanced for me to feel like some seasons are more attractive than others. Like I really love fall and summer just feels like something to get through. So is that like an invitation? Is there something there to work on? Yeah, you're just all messed up. Right. There's no hope for you. All right, well. <laughs> No. That means I don't have to try. So, you know, it takes a lot of pressure Just off. Just do yin yoga all the time, right. all year round. No, that's a great, great question. It's actually a very multifaceted question with many considerations and angles that, like, you're making my happy brain just turn all kinds of gears. We, we could discuss the nuances of this forever. 
and we could get into one's primary constitution, astrological influences, soul purpose, and more. So in a nutshell, for the sake of simplicity, no. I don't think there's anything wrong with favoring one season over another. And I've always personally loved Autumn the best as well. And especially in Texas, as I've lived here the last few years, summer is something to get through, to get through alive. Yeah, I don't think anybody in Texas really loves summer, do they? I mean, it is just something to kind of just, okay. Yeah. Definitely, definitely not like my Southern California home where I grew up, where every day is pretty much just beautiful and the same. But, you know, that can also get a little boring when there are no real seasons. Right. So to answer your question and, and anybody listening, because we all naturally are going to be more inclined towards liking a particular season over another. So ask yourself these, these questions. You know, I'm all about the self-inquiry. Love it. So what is it about the other season or seasons that you dislike? Is there something during that season that you can shift for yourself? Like how you care for yourself and manage the season, for example, that could make it more enjoyable. So I'd say identify the few key things you dislike. Are they energetic in nature? Like you dislike the outward energy of summer? Are they how the season feels in your body? So get really clear on what those, those few things are that you dislike. And from there, you'll kind of intuitively be able to see, oh, all right, if I make these few shifts next time that season comes around, I bet it would be a little more enjoyable. What about like social things that might influence your perception of a season? For example, the summer body. And if I'm mm. body conscious or body insecure, then I might really love winter when everybody's wearing sweaters anyway. Mm. Excellent point. Now you're gonna take me down the rabbit hole of diet <laughs> culture and body shaming. Yeah. Yeah, that that is a really great point. And I think each season kind of does have its cultural culturally influenced and media influenced nuances, right? It's the summer body or it's the everybody get together with your giant family and fight and spend way too much money during and the holidays. Fry a turkey. <laughs> right. So stuff your faces and this is what you're supposed to do. And if you are not doing those things then you're weird and there's something wrong with you right. right so and we've talked a lot about this and various flavors and, and faces in our various topics throughout this show um i think the key is to really <clears throat> get clear on what you love and what you really need and want and tune into the natural energetic flow of the season versus whatever the mass culture is trying to feed you and that's not something that is just reserved for like oh these like really cool medicine women who you know can hang out with plants and all of this stuff i remember before i really stepped fully onto this path just kind of having this like resentment and jealousy towards these people i looked up to my my mentors and just being like oh my gosh i'll never i'll never get there they're that's just not for me in this life they're like really cool and <laughs> and like pretty and can communicate with with these energies and I'm like oh so this is not reserved for just like a special select few like who oh, can really tune into the energies of the season we all have that we are all of the earth like your physical body your sensorial experience your your translator this physical body that's your little antenna and and translator for this this earth experience is made of the earth so as she shifts and changes, so does your body. You can pick it up. You are a very subtle and very sensitive creature. It's just things like overtaxed nervous systems and living so far out of balance with nature that tend to numb those sensitivities because it's like so unnatural that our bodies can't take it. So out of protection, they just kind of numb. So we all have this ability. So I'm getting way off the, the question, but the mass culture will always try to influence us and the key is to really stay true to yourself and to feel into what do you need and whether it's the summer body or it's the stuff your face and spend a bunch of money or whatever it is what feels best to you and what feels true to you and if it's not what is being you know celebrated or fed to us then good be that change because the more that all of us really are clear and come into right relationship with these natural ways and we stand up for ourselves and we we are lighthouses and inspirations to others to show like hey the way we've been doing it ain't natural and doesn't feel good and is probably the reason why we're all so sick and overweight you know then more of us will kind of take that as inspiration and kind of like permission to also do that so be that lighthouse fuck the summer body fuck spending all your money 
just what feels the best and follow that. Does that kind of answer your question? Should I get off my pedestal now? Yeah, that that was pretty helpful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. No further questions. So in the emotional and mental bodies, autumn is a time of harvesting the literal and metaphorical fruits of our labor all year. Naturally, it will bring with it a sense of melancholy and grief. Something is ending. With each harvest, there's an ending, and then endings bring some grief. There's simultaneous celebration and death on some level. Every time something is harvested, something is dying. Every time we are celebrating, something's also ending. So it's this this melancholy energy. Honor it and honor the grief and track any stories that arise as a result of these emotions. Often we'll judge these emo- emotions, which creates stagnation because we're ashamed of our feelings and we don't allow them to flow because we think we can outsmart them by just ignoring them. And sorry, but your energy bodies are way smarter than your scared ego. This is the time of year for release, harvesting and receiving while simultaneously releasing to create base. We must decide what is truly necessary to take with us into the metaphorical underworld in the coming darkness before the sun returns at winter solstice. Grounding into the body through embodiment practices is helpful to allow us to feel stable enough to surf our emotional body, to stabilize the nervous system like I just touched on and like we've touched on many times. I invite you to go check out episode 13 and the blog post on embodiment for more on that. And just as the leaves are shedding what has run its course and what they can no longer nourish, so must you. Spend some time reflecting on the year and celebrating what you're harvesting while also identifying what must be purged. To receive, we must release. To receive, we must release. There's only so much space and so much that we can hold and focus on. And so to receive the next thing, we must release. We must honor and thank what is here and let it keep going, let it keep flowing. In the spiritual body, autumn is really a time when the earth is literally in its death phase. Death is near, life force energy is low, and it's a natural time of cozy introspection. This is the best time of year to receive guidance and insight from source, from your higher self, from the ancestors, or whatever else you like to think of as this universal consciousness. So when you talk about receiving guidance from, you know, the ancestors, for example, does that mean that it would be a good time to start making plans for the coming year? Or would that be premature? <clears throat> great question. Again, you've got all kinds of great questions today. That's not premature at all to start to make plans and, and think about the seeds that you want to plant for the next harvest for right. next year, right? So it's not premature. However, however, many of us bypass being with and surrendering to and accepting accepting what currently is. So while there's nothing wrong with wanting to move forward, many of us don't spend the necessary time in silence and stillness and introspection. So use this sacred time to take stock of your life and your current place in it and what you've accomplished, what feels amazing, and what's not feeling so amazing. Be in this in-between phase. We don't linger here enough. We're always rushing to the next thing and be in this in-between, in this stillness, in this space. Allow ample time, intentionally allow ample time for this stillness, for breath, for meditation. Doing things like taking media detoxes and reducing screen time is really helpful. Take time to just sit and be, watch the trees, watch the leaves fall, listen to the wind, and really keep track of your dreams at this time. Keep a little dream journal. And spending time in ritual to ask the ancestors for guidance. You can set up an ancestral altar with items that belong to them, their photographs. I also think of my ancestors as, you know, the the rocks, the stone people, the trees, the plants, all of these these sacred, sacred energies and, and manifestations of these energies in physical form are so old and so wise and we're all made of each other. They're our ancestors as well. Working with flower essences like mugwort and sage and Indian pipe and may apple can help you access this in-between space more easily. And just to reiterate, Flower essences are not essential oils. They are an energetic form of plant medicine. I invite you to go back to episode two and also to my blog for loads of information about my favorite healing modality, flower essences. So before we close, I would really like to take us through a little breath exercise to help us to feel autumn in our bodies. So 
So let's do a little breath exercise together to get clear on, on each part of the wheel of the year and how autumn feels energetically. The breath has four parts. There is the inhale, the top of the inhale when we are full of breath right before we exhale. That's the second part. The third part is the exhale itself. And then the fourth part is when you're completely empty at the bottom of the exhale before the next inhale. So those four parts correspond with the four main moon phases and the four main seasons. So wherever you are right now, just empty out your breath. Wherever you are in your breath cycle, just empty it out. And just take a few really nice deep inhales and exhales through your nose. Now on this next inhale, tune into the energy of spring. So you're filling up with life force. There's so much potentiality. There is movement. There is growth. There is this promise, this birth, right? And then at the top of that inhale, hold it, feeling yourself fully expanded, like full expression, rib cage, full lungs full, everything just oh, bright, beautiful. That's summertime. Then the exhale, as you feel yourself winding and emptying, celebrating life and this breath that you still have, yet also emptying and purging, knowing that the end of it is near. This is autumn. And then holding the breath out, which can feel kind of scary for some of us if you've never worked with that kind of practice, holding the exhale out so you're empty. There's nothing there. That's winter. There's a promise of another exhale. There is space. There is emptiness. There is complete and utter stillness and silence and waiting. And then the cycle begins once more. So take a few breaths now, really lengthening your breath and feeling each of those four parts and those four seasons and noticing, so not just making it about the physical breath, like, okay, here's my inhale. Oh, okay, holding the inhale. Okay, exhale. No, okay. Really feel into the energy of each of those parts. So noticing the subtler parts the parts underneath just the physical act of breathing. Notice any stories that arise, any thoughts or images with each of the four parts. Notice any emotions that arise. And just get really, really curious, just observing. Not judging, not trying to fix, not looking for like, what's the right way to feel? No, there's no right or wrong. This is your experience. And I invite you to keep playing with this. Maybe take it into a movement exploration. So moving in response to your breath, really focusing on that autumn breath. Because that's where we currently are at this time. So that exhale, that falling out. Just play with this in the coming days. And I invite you to join the Facebook group and share this experience with me. My Facebook group is Transmuting to Nourish, Awaken, and Thrive. And the link is also on my homepage at innerspark.life. There's also a fabulous blog post and video on my website all about fall at the blog at innerspark.life slash blog. And don't miss my final two complimentary virtual moon gatherings in 2018, where we'll be clarifying what needs to be released. We'll be planting potent seeds for the months to come, accessing the energies of this time of year in our bodies, 
and working through feminine shame specifically. And I also wanted to mention that I have some really exciting offerings coming your way soon. So please do stay in touch with me. I am so excited. This autumn in particular has felt so juicy and I've received many amazing insights and downloads and the creation and, and birthing process in my cauldron is in process. So keep your eye out for that. And I believe that's all the time we have for today. Babe, do you have anything else you'd like to offer? How is that breath practice for you? Actually, yeah. So I was practicing along as you were narrating it and I really felt into the stillness between the breaths and was thinking about how yeah that really is what summer feels like and I got caught up with as a kid like summer is frantic and in your face and it's summer vacation and it's six flags and it's blah 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 and it's just so hyperactive and when I really feel into it, uh, there's a lot more stillness there than, you know, we usually allow for. And I think the same thing is true with fall. The uh, holiday season is, you know, getting into gear. So you're kind of building this frenzy for Christmas and then it's just craziness and New Year's and all that. And I think that just overall in the natural cycles, there's a lot more stillness, but especially in those in-between phases. So yeah, that was my little experience. That's beautiful observation and insight and also goes along with what we were talking about, how the natural rhythms and energies differ from what is culturally right culturally uh, perpetuated. Yeah. And I mean that that kind of the reason I think we keep coming back to that is because it influences so much of our perceptions, especially in this culture where we don't necessarily have long lineages that we are in touch with. You know, not a lot of people even know their grandparents, you know, so we don't have a lot of other sources to get our information from. The closest thing that a lot of us have to a village elder or whatever kind of traditional influence that would be is the TV. Right, the, the local news anchor. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love this topic of seasonal living so much. So thank you all for tuning in. And I invite you to go check out the website and snag one of my free sessions that I offer each week. If you're seeking guidance on your path, and feeling ready to make changes and to transmute old pain and shame into purpose, I would be so honored to speak with you and to learn more about you. Innerspark.life. And if you loved the show, please be sure to subscribe to it. Leave us a review on iTunes, help us out, and share the love with a friend. We'd love to continue this conversation. So social media stalk me at Innersparklife on Instagram and Facebook. And please catch us next time when we'll discuss why shadow work brightens your light. So much love to you until then.